Grab your phone, crack the screen, not a problem. I'm gonna show you how to replace the cracked screen glass on your iPhone flawlessly like it just rolled out of the factory, all from the comfort of your own home in as little as one hour with this new and improved patent patenting $30 DIY kit and a heat gun or hair dryer so you can keep your original display which also means you don't get the unknown parts error message after the repair. I'm gonna be doing this on an iPhone 14 Pro but the same method applies to iPhone 14 Pro Max, iPhone 14 Plus and other models. Over the years I learned so many tricks and tips which I'll share in this video and I'll also cover the common mistakes that that people tend to make during this process so you can avoid them. The first step is to remove the display. I use this paper thin super flexible oka blade included in the kit to remove any dust and debris that may be stuck along the edges. These fine particles can make it unnecessarily difficult to remove the display similar to rust on a bowl. The next step is optional but makes my life easier so I always plan ahead and do it. I use a q-tip to dispense some 99% isopropyl alcohol along the edges where the glass meets the frame and let it sit for five minutes. This softens the adhesive that runs along the perimeter holding the phone shut. Kind of like a alcohol helps the iPhone open up. The more you do this, the easier the next step gets and as long as you use 99% isopropyl alcohol, it's not a problem at all for you to use the phone during this time. Typically, I do the Q-tip trick a couple of times, heat it up to about 80 degrees Celsius using the sticker thermometer included in the kit to ensure I don't go over 100 degrees Celsius for more than a few seconds as that can damage the display and insert the razor blade included in the kit as far as it can go and lift the display from the bottom of the bezel. The metal frame of the phone prevents the razor blade from going too deep. Lifting from the bezel ensures that the force you apply is not concentrated in a small area of the display. You should be able to lift the display with only about a pound of force. If it doesn't come up after a couple times of rocking like this, then you need more heat or alcohol. The adhesive is quite gummy and stretchy. The sputger comes in handy for this. Although it looks like a pry tool, just remember that it is not a pry tool. If you use this to pry, you're not going to be happy. It's for disconnecting flex cables found inside the phone. It is made of soft plastic so it does not damage the connectors nor cause a short. There are cables that run along the left side of the phone, but when you use the spudger as shown here, you should be able to avoid damaging the cables. Now open it up like a book and remove the shield that's holding down the cable with the supplied tri-tip screwdriver. Just remember to place the screws off to the side in the same orientation they came out. For iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, there are two brackets held on by one screw each, and once the display is removed, you do need to remove the bracket holding down the flex cable for the mic and the proximity sensor. You don't need to remove the entire part, you just need to take the Oka blade, some isopropyl alcohol, and lift it away from the glass. But for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max models, there is no component that you need to remove from the display panel. Use the sharp edge of the Oka blade to create a starting point for the wire as shown. You don't need to go far, just this tiny bit is enough. On these phones, it seems like they use the stronger glue than in previous models. So you may find it helpful to go all the way around, especially if you're using a hairdryer which is not as powerful as a heat gun. Just make sure not to go beyond the bezel. Now make sure the screen is squeaky clean for maximum holding strength and place the display glass side down on the supplied gel pad and begin removing the glass from the display using the included wire tool. I find this new synthetic carbon strand does not kink like the standard molybdenum wire but still keep the wire tight and low. As explained in the previous video, the plastic bezel around the display is thicker than the display layer. Because of this, the wire actually doesn't even touch the display layer when it's kept tight tight and low against the glass. When it comes to holding it, I find it easier to just wrap the wire around the stick a couple of times to hold it in place. If there's an area that is broken into many pieces, remove the area first as otherwise you could be stuck removing the small pieces one by one. The trick to making this process go as smoothly as possible is to frequently change the angle of the wire, just like how you would with a saw when you cut something and maintain consistent heat. It's really helpful if you have someone who can assist you by holding the heat gun or hair dryer. If you can find a sweet spot where you can maintain constant temperature on the display, that's perfect. It'll be like using the professional equipment you see in other videos. Use the sticker thermometer in the kit to keep it between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius. Maintaining good heat is the most crucial part of this repair and this sticker makes it easier than using a laser thermometer because you get a constant readout instead of having to switch hands with the thermometer. And if you find that the wire keeps breaking over a certain spot, that's likely because it's catching an edge of a broken piece of glass. Simply try a different angle of approach. You can also use the Oka blade whenever the wire gets stuck, which is my preferred method but there are some precautions to doing this as explained in a previous video. If you ever need to remove the display during the process for any reason just remember to slowly twist it off instead of pulling it straight up. Pulling it straight up can cause over flexing of the display. On these devices the OLED layers are soft and flexible but only to a certain point. When the glass is cracked there is absolutely no structural integrity to the display making it vulnerable to over flexing as well as further damage in general. And honestly, this is the number one reason why you should replace the cracked screen glass before it's too late. 
That's it for the glass removal process. I find the next step to be quite boring, so I fire up the display with the glass removed not only to test it, but to get some quick dopamine hits, pat myself on the back, and imagine all the fun things I'm going to do with the profit from this repair. Now, when it comes to the cleaning process, fold a piece of paper towel, soak in an isopropyl alcohol, and place it on top of the display for 5 minutes to soften the old glue. You can remove the old glue with your fingers after it's dried, but there's this tool that can save you time which costs around $20. If you're getting into flipping phones, or you think you'll be doing this repair more than once, once, I recommend getting it. With this machine, you can skip the paper towel trick altogether and go straight to removing the glue. Once you've removed as much glue as possible, it's time to wipe the display clean with isopropyl alcohol. Use the microfiber cloth included in the kit for the final wipe. Now dispense the specified amount of glue for the phone in a dog bone shape. For iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, dispense a droplet or two above the area where the holes are. It doesn't have to be an exact shape, but you should remove the protective film and lower the glass slowly. Keep a close eye on how the glue contacts the glass and lower it at a pace that prevents air from from being trapped. Even if you do end up with bubbles, that's not the end of the world, especially on these newer iPhones with soft OLEDs. You can easily squeeze them out. Here's a pro tip though, sometimes the shortest path to the edge isn't the best direction to squeeze the bubble. Sometimes they just seem to have a mind of their own. The best way to spread the glue evenly is simply letting it sit on a level surface for about 10 minutes. You can apply heat to speed up the process and leave one side propped up to encourage flow to the other side. The bezel is the exact same shape and size as the front glass, so your alignment will be perfect every time. Simply hold the bezel and the glass so they sit flush. The lip and the bezel ensures perfect factory spec spreading of the glue every time as well. Unlike most UV glues, this glue is specially formulated so you can simply expose it to daylight to cure, but the kit does come with a UV light which is powered by a standard charging block with a USB-C on one side and micro USB on the other. It comes in especially handy if you don't have time to sit for the glue to fill all the way to the edge. You can tack the corners that's filled and gently press to fill an empty corner. You can clean the underside of the front glass by the camera using a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol if any glue got on there. And that's it for the repair. Don't forget to treat yourself now that you've saved $300. It may not be saying much considering the difficulty of some of the other phones, but I have to say that the newer iPhones are by far the easiest, and yet the most profitable phones to repair a cracked screen glass on. This is not only due to the high cost of the display, but the error message you get if you were to replace the display as a whole. I do want to set a realistic expectation here for the novice, and remind you that DIY projects, whether it be cooking, car repair, or woodworking, tend to appear easier in videos, and this is no exception. The fastest I've been able to complete this repair is just about one hour, but it's realistic to expect it to take about twice as long. However, once it's all done, it's quite satisfying because it's something you will look at and use almost every day, if not every day. Additionally, dropping and cracking the phone will not be as stressful as it once was. But still, use the promo code FREETMP to receive a free tempered glass screen protector with your kit and protect your screen. Like and subscribe to see more videos like this, and if you want me to fix your phone, drop me a comment in this video, and if I pin it, I'll fix it. Thank you and have a great rest of the day. Oh, and just one last thing. When it comes to putting the phone back together, you'd want to ensure the frame is squeaky clean and apply a good amount of pressure if you want to retain any water resistance.